Okay, so for today's lesson, what we're going to be getting into is the primary controls that are found on oil heat uh, furnaces. So we're going to be getting over uh, both of the primary controls that at a multi in oil, uh, the stack relay and the CAD cell primary control. But we're going to start off with the the stack relay for um, this presentation. The stack relay really is some old technology. Uh, we're talking 70s uh, type technology, but the reason why I am still covering it or I'm going to talk about it is because, you know, believe it or not, there are some oil furnaces out there, boilers out there that actually will maybe possibly still have the stack relay on there as their primary control. Now, most mechanics out there today, if they do run into a stack relay, uh, they usually are going to take it out and they're just going to replace it with a CAD cell uh, primary control, only due to the fact that the primary CAD cell control is uh, a much safer um, primary control to use versus the, the stack relay, and I will discuss why that is during this presentation. So for the purpose of this, really the primary control on a oil burner is for flame safety. It regulates the burner sequence. The primary control is what tells the burner to that there's a call for heat and it also tells the burner and furnace whether or not it actually lit off and we actually do have fire in the chamber. So it has to be some sort of control on there that's going to do that. So with the flame safety features on it, it ensures that the flame is established within a reasonable length of time. With stack relays, it was usually around 90 seconds. That's a long period of time for the burner to finally realize whether or not it actually lit. Stack relays are mounted in the flue pipe. So we had to have a very long trial for ignition, so to speak, roughly around 90 seconds before the stack relay sent the signal to the burner and let everything run as normal. So that's one of the big reasons why we kind of steer away from um, the stack relays is because of that long safety timing that they had on them. So if the burner does not ignite within the time frame after the thermostat calls for heat or if the burner goes out for 90 seconds or so, the burner motor is going to stop and it must be manually reset. This safety prevents any excess of oil from building up in the combustion chamber. That is one of the main reasons why we now have CAD cell primary controls because of their shorter um, safety timing that they do have on them. So with a stack relay, that burner would be dumping oil into the chamber for approximately 90 seconds if the oil didn't get ignited by the electrodes. That's a long time. 90 seconds, a minute and a half of oil is getting dumped into a combustion chamber when it didn't get it ignited. So what would happen sometimes is they may have what would be called intermittent ignition or trials of where the furnace would actually fire off and then other times it wouldn't, it would lock out. And with that accumulation of oil after about 90 seconds inside the, the chamber, the furnace would rumble, um, smoke really, really badly, um, 
I've seen, I know I've seen in my experiences of, you know, barometric dampers getting blown right off of the flue pipe because of the spontaneous combustion of that leftover oil that was sitting in the bottom of the chamber. So it could create a really dangerous um, situation if they don't happen to fire off correctly. So we got two types, again, of flame safety controls that you're going to see. You're going to have your stack switch, or better known as the stack relay. And again, they are it's an older style type um, unit that was used. It's very rarely seen today, but you know, you, we, you still got to kind of think about them. And if they are, chances are you're just going to replace it anyway because we just don't want them anymore. And then you have your CAD cell type relay, uh, which is really a light sensing type control, which is found on a lot of our more modern units. So there's the stack relay right there, or better known as the stack switch. This guy is going to get mounted right inside the flue pipe. And what it has on there is a bimetal uh, stack relay sensing element that is on there that's going to be mounted in the flue pipe. So as the flue pipe started to heat up, the bimetal that is inside, and there's your bimetal right here, you can kind of see it, it's right here. This bimetal would actually expand. And when that expand, it opened a, a set of contacts, okay? Or, a, or it would open the set of contacts and close the um, hot contacts telling the burner that it actually did ignite. If it didn't ignite after about 90 seconds, it would lock out. So the wiring for these guys, it was relatively simple. Um, usually you would see a couple of terminals, one, two, three, four. This was all of your controls. So terminal one would be your your power coming in after you know your if you had a limit here or some sort of like that like a maybe a high limit switch or something like that um, it would get powered into terminal number one terminal number two was your neutral terminal three went to your motor terminal four went to your ignition transformer okay and just tied back to number two. Your thermostat, depending on what you were doing, whether it was an aquastat or uh, just a regular warm air thermostat, would get connected to your W and your B on the stack relay to your R and your W on your um, thermostat or for your aquastat, whatever you want it would be. So if there was no ignition, and uh, consequently no heat in the stack, the, st the st uh, safety switch heater remains in the circuit. So approximately after about 90 seconds of operating time, the safety switch heater would open the safety contacts, which would shut off your burner and all that stuff. The si the start, um, to start the cycle again, you must manually shut off the system, then depress the re reset button, and then allow it to try again. But now, those are really no longer really being around. So now we got our CAD cell relay. So that's what the CAD cell uh, primary control looks like. This one here is a Honeywell R8184G. These are going to be found on your modern oil burners. And again, like I said, if you do run into a stack relay, you're just going to rip that guy out, put a new piece of flue pipe in, and just rewire that burner for a primary control. It's a much safer type of uh, unit that we have here. So the main component of this is your CAD cell. Now look at the timing on this guy. Okay, Lockout timing in this one is 45 seconds. That's, that's better. Now different models of primary controls have different safety timings on them. They range anywhere from about 15 seconds to about 45 seconds. So it gives the burner a few seconds to actually light off. So they are much safer to have on an oil burner. You're not going to waste 
as much oil. Um, if the burner does happen to fail for whatever reason, it doesn't ignite. So it, they do have much better uh, characteristics, safety timings on them. So the CAD cell itself is really what does all the work and is what really sends the signal to the, the primary control to tell us whether or not the burner actually lit. And that is made up of what we call cadmium sulfide. Okay, and that is what actually changes its resistance when it's actually exposed to light. So what you're seeing here is the CAD cell I. This guy here is actually going to be sitting inside the oil burner and it's going to be looking down the air tube on the oil burner. So when the oil actually does ignite, one of the byproducts of, of combustion is light. So the CAD cell I will actually pick up that light. And when that happens, it changes its resistance. Okay? So that CAD cell, which is made up of cadmium sulfide, a ceramic disc, a conductive grid, and electrodes, is what's doing all of the work. All of that stuff is actually encased inside a glass. The CAD cell has to be positioned correctly in the oil burner so that it can sense the light that is being produced by the flame. Okay, so if it's not really doing that, you're going to get a false reading. So the CAD cell is going to be sitting right back here, or usually it's going to be mounted somewhere around here somewhere. But that CAD cell has to be having a good cleared line of sight all the way down the air tube to see the flame. If that cat cell is, happens to be maybe jarred up a little bit or jarred down or dirty or whatever happens or whatever it is, it's not going to see the, the light correctly. Okay, Adequate light from the flame must reach that cell to lower its resistance efficiently. Okay, The cell must be protected from external light, Okay, so which means the, the burner, the transformer and everything has to be put down and secured because we don't want any sort of external light looking at the, the CAD cell eye. Because if we do have any sort of external light looking at the CAD cell, the CAD cell is going to get tricked and it's going to think that it lit. You're going to have a no heat call. Okay, Ambient temperature has to be under 140 degrees. Obviously, I think that's self-explanatory. 140 degrees, it's going to melt. It's not going to work very well for you. Okay, so that location must provide adequate clearance. Metal surfaces must not affect the cell by movement, shielding, or any sort of radiation. So when we're testing the CAD cell sensor itself, if we are taking an ohm reading across our two wires, and I want to go back a few slides here, you're going to see TT and FF. TT is where we're going to be connecting our thermostat wires. FF is for our CAD cell. FF, okay, flame. If we take an ohm reading with the burner on and it is actually fired, if you read anywhere between 0.5 ohms to maybe about 600 ohms, when the burner is firing, the uh, that is pretty normal okay for a resistance reading again that can change depending on the type of primary control that you're using and the CAD cell all right if it's under 1600 ohms according to Beckett it advises that the properly functioning CAD cell control will measure under 1600 ohms but not zero resistance above 1600 ohms you're going to want to check for a sooty CAD cell sensor, a sensor that is misaligned and doesn't see the flame correctly, uh, or you have a bad oil burner flame itself, you may have to clean it, uh, readjust the oil burner, do something to it. Um, if the flame in the alignment are good, then you're going to want to just simply replace the CAD cell. Um, if you have a very high ohm reading, preferably like infinity, um, chances are the CAD cell is just not seeing the light. It needs to be either cleaned, replaced, or you're just going to have to look in to see why you're not getting the right reading. Now, with CAD cells, 
uh, primary controls like this, they have come out with some automated LED readouts for some of your uh, primary controls. Like for example, the Honeywell CAD cell R7184 um, CAD cell control. It usually has a, comes with an LED flash. Um, if it flashes one, it's reading zero to 400 ohms. Two, it's reading the four to 800 ohms. Three flashes, it's eight to 1600 ohms. Or four, it's actually greater than 1600 ohms. Other Beckett controls, like the Beckett Genesis 7575, has a status light decoding table. Um, if it's red, it means that the CAD cell has actually locked out. If it's flashing red, it means it's in a soft lockout. Um, if it's on green, that means it's normal operation or it could be, uh, could be stray light during standby. You may want to look into the gaskets to make sure that the burner is actually sealed and no external light is um, making its way into the burner. If it's flashing green, it means it's in a recycle mode. If it's flashing yellow, uh, the control is in pump prime mode or the reset button currently held for 15 plus seconds. That's what it usually would mean if you're dealing with that type of primary control. Um, for the flame detection ranges, anywhere between 0 and 1600 ohms is considered normal for this particular type of model. Um, if it, Limited means it's 1600 ohms to lockout. Uh, defective control or dirty or misaligned sensor, it's going to be greater than 1600 ohms. And if you read infinity, it usually means you have an open circuit or broken wire or maybe possibly a loose connection.